Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're gonna do a chatty get ready with me. I haven't done one of these in a bit, so well, actually, I did one on my birthday. That's tight. That was about a a little less than a month ago but i really wanted to do one based on the thank you next song that everyone's been doing like videos on which i thought was really cute but when i think of thank you next and like how it applies to me i don't really think of like relationships personally i think of jobs and jobs i've had in the past some that were really good some that were pretty garbage <laughs> And I just wanted to go through and talk about the jobs that I've had, uh, what was good about them, what was bad about them, what I learned from them, because I'm actually at a place right now where I really like my current position, and it's one that I just got in May of last year. So we're coming up on right around eight months here, and I'm really enjoying it. So I thought it would be fun, not fun, but I thought it would be enlightening to look back on my previous jobs. So before we jump into this video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these chatty get ready with me's. And if you haven't and you'd like to, hope you will consider subscribing so that you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. So I technically had my first job when I was a teenager. I was a uh, 14? I want to say 14 so i'm using my tatcha silk canvas primer to prime today and i've hit pan on it <laughs> mm. yeah that's probably not gonna last much longer so when i was in high school i went to two different high schools my first high school had a requirement where you need to put in or you had to put in a certain number of either internship or volunteer hours in order to qualify to graduate so I decided to just kind of knock those out like my first year because what you had to do is like do your internship or volunteer work and then you had to do a whole presentation on it and then you had to schedule the presentation. It was kind of a big process and a lot of people like waited until their senior year to do it and then you had all these people rushing to do it and some of them couldn't find internships. So I decided to knock it out of the way early. So I did it I'm pretty sure the summer after my freshman year. For my internship I actually went and I worked at my stepmom's office. So she worked at CPS, so Child Protective Services. Um, so whenever you call CPS you know they normally do a house call and they have to kind of like investigate and see what's going on. She was one of the like investigators for CPS. So in our county they would let you come in as like a volunteer i don't know technically if i was allowed to do it but i mean it was free labor so they were like yeah sure why not i have this sample that i just picked in my recent bite size review series and it's a sample of the hello happy soft blur foundation from benefit and i want to try it out today but i really have no idea how this shade is gonna look oh it's a bit dark yeah, so I'm gonna use my palette and just lighten it just a little bit. So I know my stepmom, she really wanted me to be like a uh, assistant to her at the place, but she did, like I said, a lot of those house calls. And at the time I was like 14-ish, and just for safety reasons, they wouldn't let anyone do house calls or work outside of the office until you were 18, because it's, it's actually a fairly dangerous job. Ooh, it looks a bit light now. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna stick with it and see how it goes. So I stayed in the office and what I did was essentially go through all of the paperwork. So there's a lot of forms that need to be filled out whenever, you know, a call is made, whenever a child is taken into foster care. So we had these huge case files for every person that CPS ever basically came in contact with. And when I joined, they were moving to a totally paperless system. So instead of, I don't have my sponge. So they were doing their best to move to a totally paperless system. And they had moved basically everything current to paperless, but it was the backlog of all of their like history, historic files that hadn't been moved, that hadn't been scanned. So essentially what you had to do is they had this huge scanning office and you had to scan each file a certain way because there were a lot of like court documents, there were a lot of documents of seals on them, like, and each one had to be scanned differently. So what I had to do was learn how to scan an entire file, and you have to assign a case, you have to go by case number, and you basically had to scan each file correctly. And I did this for a whole summer. <laughs> I definitely learned a lot from that job. Not only was it the first time, this is so light, Jesus, I'm gonna have the bronze or something, but I do see it getting a little darker as I blended in. But I learned uh, 
the value of a schedule because it was my first time doing anything outside of school like with a regular schedule. It also got me to reflect back on my own experiences and what I'd been through because when you're scanning all these files you're reading all of them so I read about two decades worth of CPS case files and it was I'm not gonna lie it was pretty depressing it was and because not every case you know works out the way it should a lot of things happen to people that never should happen to people and so at first I was I have to say I was very depressed about the situation about how like people were treated and what happened but then I grew to appreciate the work that's being done to help out people and to not lose hope. I don't know if I would even call this like medium coverage. Like I'm seeing all my freckles and redness still come through. I mean, it's sitting really nicely on my skin other than the fact that I mixed a shade way too late, but it, it is oxidizing a bit. Like it got darker since I put it on. I will just use a lot of concealer and then bronze. <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm, I am really glad that A, I did stick to like a work schedule that entire summer because you know it was one of the first times I had to wake up early get it was a formally dress office so I had to wear some nice work clothes every day it got me used to the work schedule it had me reflect on my situation and what I've been through and you know, I really appreciated working there and I knocked out my hours early got everything done was ready and then I did ended up not doing that presentation I'm pretty sure because I ended up switching high schools you know, I want to bring this down here, a little bit there. So my next job, again, uh, was at the boarding school I went to. So I applied to and got into a boarding school that was a boarding school for the last two years of high school, your junior and senior year. And it was an academically advanced school. A lot of the courses were college level. And while you were there, they didn't want you to have a job. You weren't allowed to have a car. You weren't allowed to have a, a real job or anything because they really wanted you to focus on school, which I appreciate. Because of that, everyone took like extracurriculars like super seriously because you could do clubs, you could found clubs, you could be president, you could be vice president. So that was all taken very seriously. But one of the most prestigious like positions you could get was RA. So since we were lived in dorms, we did have RAs and you had, it was an extensive application process to become an RA. All right, we're looking a little bit better there. And I really wanted to be an RA for our hall. So uh, it was a couple of weeks that we had to apply. There were several individual interviews. There was a group interview. There was a second group interview. And then I finally got it. So you got to move into your dorm early. But part of being an RA was that you had to plan all the events for your hall. You had to decorate your hall. You had to make the nameplates for everyone who moved in. You had to help welcome the new people. So, I mean, it was a lot, and we, I gotta say, we weren't paid for this because the boarding school was completely free. So while I say it was a job, it was more of a, it was a job. It just wasn't one that we were getting paid for, but the school was totally free. Like, you really only had to pay for, like, extraneous stuff because they gave you room and board, they gave you food, they paid for all your books. They They really did everything other than, like, little things you might need like toiletries like toothpaste you had to buy your own toothpaste like little things like that so it actually was a great opportunity and it came at a time in my life when I really needed it and I really appreciated it so I was more than happy to do that work because I was having fun with it too so I did that for my senior year of high school and then I went to college in college I qualified for financial aid and one of my financial aid things awards there it is, awards, was a work study. Now, the story of my college career could be summed up in bureaucratic mess. I spent so much time doing paperwork, trying to get my financial aid straightened out, trying to do this, trying to do that, and th that part was miserable. But I loved the rest of my experience because I love being in class, I love learning, and I love the jobs that I had for the, for the most part. We'll get into that. <laughs> so I got this work study, like, amount that I could make. They gave you basically, like, you can make this much money a semester with work study. Uh, the only thing is that they didn't give you a work study job. You had to find your own job. Uh, so this was in downtown Washington, D.C. And let me put some powder on my face. I should go for a darker powder since my face is so light. So this is in downtown Washington, D.C. And the university partnered with a lot of, you know, businesses and uh, government agencies. Uh, but it's a long process trying to find 
your own position. And I didn't realize that the paperwork process was a lot faster for everyone else. And so they started looking for jobs at the beginning of the summer before they came to school. And so I was coming at it late, starting to look for a job in like September. So I applied everywhere, didn't really hear back. So I didn't actually do my work study in the fall. So I didn't really have that much extra money other than what was left over from my financial aid. Over that first winter break, I got an email back from one of the places I had applied to, and it was from the Smithsonian. So the National Museum of Natural History is where I ended up working. Back in college, I was a CJ major, and I really wanted to do this grad program in forensic science, but unfortunately they like cut the program the year I got there. So I really was looking for a work study in that field, and one of like the top choices was the Smithsonian because at the time they had this huge forensic science exhibit and they still had the forensic science like department like the real life bones works there <laughs> and I worked with her and under her for a little bit but I, it was just a really great opportunity and when I applied I honestly didn't think I was ever going to hear anything back but a few months later I had it. So I spent the rest of my college career working my work study for the Smithsonian. And what I did is I worked inside that exhibit and would explain, we had actual like human remains, bones, we had bones, um, from archeological digs and um, from the museum's collection. So we would actually, were the only museums that would let people actually touch the bones and look at them. And it was really, really cool. So I learned a lot about forensic anthropology. I learned a lot about the museum and I got to just interact with visitors and like teach them things all day. I also spent two summers working there. My first summer I had to go back home, but my other two summers I saved up money, worked through the summer and stayed in the city and I loved those summers. They're, even though summers in DC are gross because it's so hot and humid, I loved those summers. So that wasn't the only job that I had in college. I ended up working a couple of other ones. Some were more like volunteer things that I would go and volunteer for, but the other big job I had my senior year because uh financial aid i could go on about how they messed up and how i wasn't given what i needed so i i had to jump and get something full time to help me pay for the last few months i was in school so i ended up working at whole foods we had a whole foods nearby and i worked as a uh, barista slash bartender and i say slash bartender because our coffee bar we had a regular coffee set up and everything. We also made smoothies, but then we had like six beers on tap. So we had a little bar, people could come and sit down and drink. And you, you would think beer wouldn't be that bad, but we had some beer that was like up to 10%. So there are plenty of people that got smashed the Whole Foods. And I will say my overall experience there, very negative, honestly. I mean, I would say, I appreciate the experience because it was the first time I like didn't like a job. <laughs> this is good. Oh, oh, this is terrible, but it's the first time I really didn't like a job. It was the first time that I got like creepily hit on by both customers and coworkers. It was the first time that I really had to do retail with difficult people. <laughs> Um, I've, oh, I've got some crazy stories. Um, so my department that I worked in had the cheese department, the wine department, which is why we also had the beer on tap, and the coffee department. So I worked mainly as like that barista upstairs, but downstairs we had our main cheese department, so I would also work there. And I have to say that it was a difficult job. It was very labor intensive. You're on your feet all day. Not only that, every night, and I tended to work nights because back my last semester, I would work the morning at the museum. I would go to class all day and then I would work nights at the Whole Foods. So we would be done at around 1130 or midnight and then I would go home, try to do homework and then pass out <laughs> before doing it all again the next day. So it was a physically demanding job in that cheese is heavy. <laughs> Have you ever lifted like a, a thing of cheese? It's big. <laughs> and every night we would have a pallet to, uh, to unpack and to put away before you could leave. It was bad. And of course, anyone who's worked in retail will know people call out, people don't show up. You've got customers you have to deal with as well until the store closes. Uh, 
So while it was a pretty miserable experience, I'm glad I was able to experience it at that point in my life because even though I, I really did need the money and the job, it wasn't like my entire life depended on the job if that makes sense because I could have made it work like leaving that job and I'm glad I was able to leave that job I was really only there for I think it was four or five months um I'm just glad I really didn't have to stay there any longer but I learned how to deal with difficult people I learned uh I think that's the big one it's just I learned how to deal with very unpleasant situations and you know what, as unpleasant as it was, I think it was a good time to learn those lessons because I would have much rather learned those lessons then than go into future situations not knowing how to like handle anything. The last thing that I also did in college was I was president of a club that I helped found and that, ooh, I did a little heavy on this side, didn't I? And that was a lot of work as well. But since I wasn't actually like really paid for that, um, I, I wouldn't count it as a job, but I did put a lot of work into it. And so on top of the jobs, I would be going to club meetings. I'd be planning things. I'd be, ugh. Ugh. I was, I did, I'm, I look back and I'm shocked at how much I did back then. So after college, I moved back up here and here is New Jersey, if you didn't know, to be closer to family and to live with my grandmother. And I didn't really want to like put down roots or anything here because I was convinced that I was only going to be up here temporarily. There are sirens going by. But I was convinced I was only going to be here temporarily and that I was going to move back to DC. So I spent the first few months after college kind of planning to go back to DC. <laughs> Oh, it was a bit unfortunate because if I could go back and redo that, I probably would have just jumped in and tried to get a job right away. Um, but I don't know, DC felt like home to me. It was the first place where like, it was kind of like my city. I discovered it on my own. I made a lot of great friends there. I just, it, it felt like home to me. And so I was desperate to like, go back. But that being said, I wasted time that I could have been searching for jobs, just planning to go back to DC. DC ended up not working out because A, it's expensive and I'm broke. <laughs> and I really wanted to do more school and it, school just wasn't in the cards, especially with my current student loan. So I needed a job. I ended up getting a part-time job at the Barnes and Noble College, not too far from where I live. And I ended up working there for almost three years. I feel like out of all the jobs that I've had, I've learned the most from that one. I started as a part-time cashier and I worked my way up to a full-time manager within the three years. And not only did it prepare me for the job that I have now, because the job I have now is in publishing. So I went from bookstore to publishing. I just learned a lot. It's a retail store, but also tied to a university and also tied to publishing. So in a given day, I could interact with students, professors, corporate people from our headquarters, which was not too far away as well, along with publishers, publisher reps. Um, so I ended up learning a lot and I'm most grateful for that job. I met some amazing people. I met some not so great people. Not only did I work for a range of people, but I got to a point where I was managing and overseeing other people for the first time in a professional capacity as well. And I learned a lot. I think I learned more from the people that I was overseeing than they learned from me but I grew so much in this position of course I've got some crazy stories <laughs> uh, we had a customer like mm, you guys want to see a video all about that I could do that crazy customer stories from retail because oh, you think people I mean it's I tell people that and they're like, you worked at a bookstore, like how crazy can they get? It's a college textbook store. People get nuts about textbooks. I've got lots of stories. Ultimately, towards the end of my time there, um, I feel like it was more of a management issue that I ended up leaving and not the position issue. Because I felt that given what I had done for the company that I deserved, I deserved better than what I was being paid and how I was being treated. So, I mean, it was a great position. I learned a lot from it, but I, I outgrew it. I outgrew the position and that sometimes happens. It's not anyone's fault 
necessarily. It's just a natural progression of your career and you don't want to stunt yourself when it comes to your career. So I really think that job because without that job i wouldn't be in my current position because i got that ba like heavily based on my experience in my previous job it was also through the bookstore job that i really came to accept here as my home and that makes a lot of it sounds a bit silly at first but for someone that was so grounded and in love with DC I kept like I felt homesick for almost like a year or year and a half and I kept seeing all my friends that were still in DC and I never really put roots down here until I'd been at that job for a bit I started making new friends I started actually going out and doing things and that job had a lot to do with it I think my boyfriend had a lot to do with that too but this isn't a thank you tinder video this is a thank you jobs video <laughs> that's weird on camera i feel like i went a little ham on the blush on this side but i can't see it that much hmm. so this video is already getting pretty long so i think i'm gonna actually jump off camera to do my eyes real quick and then we'll come back for lips all right and we are back my eyes are done i used mostly my pan that palette subculture i really like using the shades roxy and all star together it gives you like this nice warm look i love the red it doesn't come off as like red on the eye which i do appreciate so i use both of those and since i got rid of cube because i really can't use cube it, i got so much hard pan on it i could, just couldn't so i picked up my bad habit dupe for this palette the retro love and i used the shade psychedelic it wasn't really that close to cube but it's still a nice shimmer with a nice pink undertone that i think matches this look really nicely so i used that all over the lid and I didn't mention that in my video, I'll mention that in like my next update that I am going to be pulling out this dupe palette a lot just for those two shimmer shades. Maybe Revolution, but mainly the Icon and Psychedelic shades, which are dupes for Cube. And what is the green shade actually called? Electric. Because those are, Electric's my favorite shade. And I feel like that's probably going to be the first or the next one that I'm going to hit pan on. Because I love that shade so much. And the Bad Habit dupe is really, really close. For my lips, I just threw on one of the Fenty Lip Stunners. This is in the shade Uncuffed, a nice like mauve color. I think Rebel Rose would have also worked pretty well right here, but I have that like on the other side of the room and my Fenty's are right here, so it's easy to just to grab it on and throw on. So that is the final look for this thank you next career edition. Get ready with me. Thank you so much for watching. Hope if you liked it, you'll give it a thumbs up and let me know down below. What do you think the most important thing you learned from a, a past job, career was? Because I think this is something that as we grow and as your career grows, it's it's important to look back and actually think and compile like what you've learned from each job that you've had. Thank you again for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.